Uh, having heard what the Chamber and the Opposition have yeah. to say, do you think that this measure represents a failure on the government's part to rein in this public spending? Look, this is not about public spending. It's totally unrelated. All the criticisms that you are hearing demonstrate a level of ignorance which is really outstanding. This, the, the money that, is, that people will pay will go to pay pensions. They will not go to the government. They will go into the social insurance fund. This is not a tax. This is insuring. Uh, I mean, the, the insurance scheme started in 1955, and every year since 1955, governments have raised contributions, and the contributions pay for higher number of pensioners getting higher pensions. And that's a system. It's a system that needs amending, and we are committed to changing it once we are free of the limitations of the European Union. But this has nothing to do with the government finances. This is a totally different debate, whether the government finances are strong or not. And they're not strong, because we've taken a hit on revenue, which has meant that we are already predicting that in the next 12 months, the minimum deficit will be a million a week. Mm. It could be more than that. But... The money that we're raising is the money that we're raising from social insurance contributions and goes to the health service and okay. to pay pensions. It's, uh, I, I appreciate the point you're trying to make, but I mean, you have spoken about the issue of public finances publicly for many years. Should more not have been done previously and is now really the time for introducing this significant hike? Well, it's not a significant hike. The point is that every year both in, the, in my time before, in uh, Peter Caruana's time, in Joshua's time, there are annual reviews which take into account what the cost is of paying the pensions. At the moment, pe mm. the, the cost of paying the pensions is £40 million pounds a year, right? We raised the, the social insurance payment the last time mm. in 2018 by 10%. But surely things haven't gone to plan when the government pointed out that they weren't going to be making any increases... There was well, a 10% we didn't increase make any in... increases. We didn't raise it in 2019 or haven't raised it mm. in 2020. Had we done so, but it you we would say have been it was meant to be 10% in line with inflation. this year. And that would have been the 30th. No, this is not inflation. This, hmm. the, the fact that the inflation is 1% or 10% is irrelevant. This is to pay the pensions of the people that have in the past been workers and paid contributions. And the contributions that you pay today hmm. will pay my pension. And then sometime in the future, you will become a pensioner and somebody will be working and mm. his contribution will pay your pension. This is how the system works. The mm. problem is, of course, that... Let me give you a very simple example. Let me, let me deal with two specific points, right? One is, it is not true that this will stop the chamber employing people because the bulk of the people employed by people in the chamber are on the minimum wage and the people on the minimum wage are not affected by this at all. Mm. They're going to get a 25%, a 25p increase an hour, and they will pay more because they will earn 25p mm. more. Not because of the cap, because the cap affects people after 300 uh, pounds a week and the minimum wage is below. I'm afraid the we second are. second thing, the second thing <laughs> is that... So Joe, I'm afraid we, I'm being told we're going to have to interject. We've got the last question. We're very pressed for time. But okay. uh, when you talk about kickstarting the economy and making uh, business, making Gibraltar attractive for businesses, this is clearly not going to make Gibraltar more attractive for businesses if they have to if they have to incur higher costs. How can you balance one with the other? Well, it's very simple. In the in the manifesto that we went to an election with in 2019, hmm. even before the pandemic, and more so after the pandemic. What we said very clearly was that we had to change the economic model mm. and make an economy which employs less people and increases productivity. So we're not in the business of wanting... Look, there are, at the moment, 6,000 pensioners, mm. OK? And there are 30,000 workers. That's five times the number of pensioners. So five guys are paying insurance to pay the pension of one guy. When those 30,000 people become pensioners, if that ratio is still there, we would need to have 150,000 workers to pay 30,000 pensions. 